Hi, it's Richard, and welcome to the Artist Insight series. This is a series where I like to interview people to give you an insight into how they tick, what motivates them, how they think, where they find inspiration, and yeah, just generally bring you people that might interest you, whether it's their work, whether it's their attitude, whether it's anything from the whole broad swath of this creative industry. So, normally in this series I like to sit down on the couch with another photographer or a model and delve into them, but today I thought I'd do something a bit different. So today I thought I would do one on me. So, uh, I hope it's of interest. <laughs> if not, skip to the next one. I don't blame you. I'm Richard, a graphic designer from Nottingham, UK, and I'm also an amateur photographer. I would say I am into digital and film photography. I don't think there is such a thing as film versus digital. And yeah, I love photography so much. It is a mad passion. So graphic design is the day job and I do enjoy it, but with photography being a passion it means it's not spoiled by the daily grind and I don't have to shoot things that I'm not interested in. So obviously being a graphic designer I went to college for graphic design. Um, I actually did a, a design and advertising course. Um, I've done uh, up to degree level and while it was interesting I don't actually think the experience was perfect for me. Um, whether it was because of the time back in that day the computers were just coming in and everything was hand drawn and I was itching to get onto the computer and my lecturers were all hand drawn um, and we kind of put heads on that sort of thing um, whether it would be different now is another thing um, but I definitely think education has changed and so I don't necessarily think you need to go to a college anymore, but college gives you an underpinning of where things came from. So for instance, like photography, I love photography, it's a major passion of mine. I'm all self-taught with photography, but I have also got a passion for photography history. So I wanted to know where it came from, how it started, what the processes were. Because I'm into film photography as well as shooting digital, um, I wanted to know, you know where it came from, how it started, why they shot film, why they shot wet plate. And yeah, so I delved deep into that. And thankfully the internet and uh, YouTube and bits and pieces have got a myriad of information to help you get a grounding and an understanding in the basics of photography, which is definitely something that I would recommend. Um, I know people say about breaking the rules, but you have to learn the rules to break the rules. And I kind of agree in certain respects, um, but I've noticed that that is getting less and less these days. Um, looking at people's work online, there's definitely not the understanding of lighting patterns and you know the inverse square law and the history of like looking at past masters' work and taking inspiration, um, which I suppose in certain respects is good because you're using your own imagination and doing your own things. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say that having a an understanding of the past definitely helps. Um, one thing that I'm really interested in, and I did a course, so I might actually try and cobble together a video of what I actually got, is wet plate photography. And I absolutely love this process. This is something that I'm looking to get more and more into. Um, and again, having access to a studio space is gonna give me the um, ability to do that. I stay motivated um, that's a good one it is quite difficult and with again social media um, it can become a massive massive burden and I say that 
in the respect of the keyboard warriors and basically these days you could put a picture up of or a model can put a picture up of a selfie of her in a toilet and it'll get so many more likes than a structured well-lit image that you've taken and the whole notion of loves and likes and and things it kind of kills it and I definitely got raveled into that whole following chasing numbers and was really downhearted when an image didn't get like my 20 loves or um, you know and, and I think for some of us that can be really kind of negative because it puts a massive burden on you to think you know you have to perform and people watching these images like are your peers and if they don't find your work satisfying enough to give it a like or a thumbs up or whatever then you think that you're not performing to the level that you need to perform and again that is totally wrong um, but it has taken this last eight months of me uh, trying to find myself and trying to find why I got into photography and not being bothered by these social issues and negativity and um, case in point a, a channel that I really love watching was uh, Timothy Ditzler, Timothy Makeups and he disappeared and it was the same sort of thing you know it's like sometimes the motivation is not there sometimes you know the lack of drive or the lack of finding time I guess but then time's an excuse um, we all say we haven't got time but we can watch a you know an episode of Netflix and find ourselves five five episodes later we're still watching Netflix um, but yeah staying motivated is quite a challenge at times but I think if you stay grounded stay true to yourself and don't be swayed by the misconception of like popularity of things on social media as taking that as a benchmark. Um, one thing that I'm actually doing um, is with this studio space putting on uh, networking nights and life drawing classes and especially with the networking nights is to get off line meet people in real life and bring back what we used to have social scenes where we used to talk to people and you know and because we can get more of a when someone's animated and they're talking about something we can see it in their eyes and we can see it the mannerisms when you text people or when it's online we don't know how to take it it's you know we don't know if people are being rude or or what so being in the social situation of a networking night is absolutely fantastic and I definitely highly recommend it I know I say that because I'm putting it on myself but it's it's more it's it's wanting to share wanting to give back wanting to promote like creativity and that has been fantastic. It's been amazing just to have people in here saying, you know, like about their work and about what they're doing and who inspires them and love seeing work on the wall and the models that we've shot, you know, they love kind of like, you know, the, the images that we've shown and they love the, the space and we're going to be putting more work on the wall, which means, you know, again, it's going to be a stimulus to when people come in, they can like, wow, you know what I mean, nice. Um, so again, motivation can come from different places. Um, but if you do find yourself, like I did, where model photography and um, social media was putting a downer on things, I went off and I photographed something totally different. So I went off and photographed cars. <clears throat> and while it's not a passion, I enjoy it. and it kept me in the loop of photography and training my skills and then slowly I missed doing the model stuff and so you know that brought that back in and now um, it is is a whole new lease of life it is, you know like I'm totally enjoying it totally immersed in it and loving where I'm going and the, the journey that I'm on so I would say yeah just do you don't do anyone else don't worry about again like what I did whether my videos haven't got 
perfect b-roll or you know i'm not as popular as the next man i'm doing this for me not for anyone else and so that's what i would highly recommend inspirations uh, inspirations are pretty much a similar sort of thing i take inspiration from past masters so one of my favorites is um unfortunately the the late peter Lindbergh. um i love looking at people's work like that but i also like the thing that we do with the networking night and to get people to have their work on the wall to share the experience of you know like people showing the work and how excited they are about actually having a physical piece that they can see and they can show people and they can talk about it um having printed stuff is fantastic and it's something that i intend to do a hell of a lot more of this year um i would love to make a book um but again I'm not going to let that rule me, um, but there's definitely going to be more work on the wall and more prints. With having the printer here, there's a guy downstairs that does uh, large format prints, so there's no excuses really. Um, but inspiration, I, I get it from everywhere. Um, one of the biggest things, and it's not necessarily photography related, is a channel on YouTube called Yes Theory. And what that is, is a group of guys that basically are open to trying things, experimenting and seeing where it takes them. And so, yeah, they've, that, that channel has opened me up to um, actually putting on the network nights, to be honest, and just going and adventuring. And it's why I went to Scotland at Christmas and uh, a few months before that, just experiencing things going to see things and getting out there getting offline and actually being in nature as well which is where you get the passion and uh, grounding i guess so uh, yeah find inspiration from lots of different places doesn't necessarily have to be photographers or graphic designers or whatever it can be a film it can be a tv series it can be out in nature it can be someone down the street who's got a hobby that you're interested in finding inspiration it comes from many forms don't close yourself off to anything um, and just go on a journey and experience things photography didn't necessarily find me as um, a calling. I actually entered into photography for two reasons. One, being a graphic designer, I was really frustrated with the quality of things that I was getting supplied to me. And I thought, rather than produce a brochure with really poor images, I could shoot it myself and get a better job. Um, I also was doing a lot of hiking and walking at the time before I was into weight training and uh, strongman um, and so I wanted to document where I was going <clears throat> so I just bought a Canon Ixus point and shoot camera um, and yeah basically it started from there um, went out did more and more found the camera very limiting so then kind of bought the next one so the next one after that was the dslr which was the canon 550d um, fantastic camera i've got some fantastic um, work um, this one on my screen which is basically jamie um, again i'll show some images in here it was taken with the canon 550d and a nifty 50 80 quid lens and it's still one of my favorite images to this day um, yeah so photography for me wasn't something that was like a, a calling um, but once I got into it I got hooked and I kind of struggled at college drawing and illustrating um, I have a very technical brain and so for me um, drawing and, and illustrating was quite difficult so I couldn't express what I wanted to express through that medium and so when I managed to pick up a camera the freedom it opened up was just fantastic it allowed me to go to places experiment to shoot things to to document what I wanted to document that I couldn't draw 
<laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, and so I started off on digital um, and more and more that I was looking at online, um, found out by the thing at the bottom, there was like a lot were Russian and um, photographers and a lot of their work was uh, film. And so it intrigued me and plus because obviously my age, uh, film was around when I was younger and when I first got into graphic design, um, film was basically all that was being used. So when I used to book photographers to do jobs, I always used to say even at the start of digital, I wanted film and I wanted the certain look and the colours and the punch that I got from film because digital when it first came out was shocking. Um, and so I then got into film photography and then it just opened up everything. So I've done everything from salt printing, printing, developing my own film. Um, I do 35, 35 millimeter um, wet plate photography. Um, I want to get into platinum palladium printing. And so the whole gamma of photography has kind of opened up to me and it's just been amazing. I love it. Um, so yeah, I'm not limiting myself to one particular thing. I enjoy kind of lots of different things. So uh, yeah, photography didn't start out the way it is now, but I'm glad of the journey to be honest. And it is a journey because we all learn different things. And I think it's given me the understanding and the grounding. Um, sometimes it'd be nice just to kind of experiment a bit more and, and play, but I'm glad that I took the time to learn about lighting and about lighting patterns, you know, Rembrandt light and things. Um, but yeah, so that's photography. <laughs> so when I first got into photography, um, obviously I was shooting landscapes and things, and then when I got into the the studio stuff. Um, I was booking studios in various places in the country and for some reason a lot of them closed down. So with this studio space it's been absolutely fantastic to be able to shoot whenever I want, shoot what I want and the creative freedom has been amazing. Um, the more that I sit in this space and use this space I absolutely love it, it's fantastic. Um, just to know that you've got somewhere where you can come whenever you want and yeah it's I don't know I don't know how to say but it's it's just given me that creative freedom that I've always hankered after um, the networking nights are something that I'm really passionate about I <laughs> I get more from sharing and giving and so for me when I got a room full of people and they're all talking about photography and about what they do and and you know sharing the passion um, it's it's fantastic it gives you such a heartwarming feeling um, and I'm, I, what I want to do is extend that into services as well so if someone wants to know about accountancy or about printers or you know like cameras and stuff I want to kind of like be able to bring services in as well um, so when people come to these networking nights they've got something that isn't just sitting in a pub having a chat to your mates it's more of a professional creative outlet where people can get something from it um, because I believe that we're all in the service industry no matter what we do and I think giving value to people and giving is definitely far outweighs you know all of this take 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 attitude that a lot of people have what advice would I give to a younger self um, I don't know because obviously I could say to try things and not try things and don't go to certain things, but it's all led me to this. Okay, I'm not exactly where I want to be and there's a lot of things that I kind of want to do and need to do. Um, 
at the moment I am on a bit of a soul searching journey so I'm doing um, Wim Hof breathing method I'm also looking at other um, things to do with the body and myself um, <clears throat> I'm also doing um, strongman competition which is another reason that I've been away because of health issues and so giving advice to a younger self would be a bit difficult because yeah um, I don't know if I'd be in the same situation if I give advice to not do stuff or not try stuff I would probably say to experiment a bit more and I don't mean that as in do wacky drugs and go and do stuff what I meant is when people phone you up and say oh I'm going into the Peak District and I'm going doing this or I'm you know what I mean like turning down opportunities that you kind of regret or not regret but think what that would have opened up and who I might have met um, I think that would probably be some advice I would give to myself. Don't limit yourself to so much and close yourself off. Um, the networking nights and sometimes this YouTube lot is bringing me out of my shell a bit, you know, open me up um, as opposed to just being kind of like a singleton. Because um, I was very. I've always been kind of a lone wolf and so um, I find it quite hard to be in groups of people so this has been a bit of an eye-opener um, and something that I quite I do enjoy it and I enjoy the networking nights even though I'm not a fan of crowds <laughs> so yeah just opening yourself up to possibilities and again go and have a look at Yes Theory YouTube channel because that has really given me motivation and, and the, the want to do this. So I thought I'd throw this in as a bit of a bonus question. <laughs> and it's not really a question. It's um, what annoys me about modern society. And there's a lot of things to be honest the biggest thing is how cruel people can be so keyboard warriors and people that think that they're doing well by giving you kind words on your photos which turn out to be snide comments um, like I don't want the world to be totally rosy and for everyone to go blow smoke up your bum and say oh your work's fantastic and you're amazing and because that's again falsehood and it's not true if someone has a genuine interest in your work and said your work inspires me or your work um, I love your lighting or how do you do this then that is different if someone says oh that's a nice approach but have you thought about this or that's a good approach but maybe I would have looked at this or you've left something in an image or whatever positive feedback is again relevant and, and fantastic but put in snide comments or keyboard warriors about you know you're ugly your works crap you don't know what you're talking about your camera doesn't do that you're shooting with the wrong camera you're shooting with a Canon should be a Nikon or a Sony like the lights wrong or you know that is totally not acceptable and something we really need to get out of and to stop on social media I don't know what it is but everybody seems to be an expert and always has their own um, two pence worth to add to anything if you enjoyed something say well done thank you enjoyed thumbs up if you didn't enjoy it why do you feel the need to say something if you can give positive feedback that will help that person then word it in such a way that you don't come across as a dick and that you're not going to hurt the person and put them in a negative space and I say that as in hurt the person because 
this is another thing like people look at people like me and judge a book by its cover so they see me they see i'm into my weight training they see i'm into you know strong man and all that sort of stuff and they assume i'm a meathead i'm an ex-doorman and so that puts a stereotypical view in people's minds but what they don't see is you might be a person that really struggles with anxiety with depression and when you go home and you think of these things and you think of things that people have said it can put you in a really bad space and you don't know what's happening in people's lives you don't know if their mum's ill their grandma's dead um you know they're facing bankruptcy they're getting a divorce their house is being repossessed you don't know you know whether they've lost their job so my advice to everyone is be kind if you can't be kind don't say anything but if you feel like you've got to say something say it in a constructive way that cannot be taken negatively because it makes you look stupid put in a negative comment you upset and aggravate the person that you're commenting about and yeah for what you feel you feel like you've made a, an effort because you've like put in someone's negative comment about oh you got that wrong or that's not right or you, you know what i mean and it's like what good did that do it made you feel good for two seconds but it depressed that other person or it upset that person to the point where you know they don't want to put their work up or they don't want to share things or whatever and so why for what reason I really don't understand it and all these arguments of film versus digital or DSLR versus mirrorless who cares it's a chuffing camera it does the same fucking thing excuse my language if it's a film camera it opens light to let film to let light onto the film it doesn't matter whether it's a Nikon FM3A or a Pentax or a Practica it does the same job it's the same with film with digital cameras should I say you know okay some might be better in low light some might be better with dynamic range they all take a picture if you can afford a camera that's the camera you can afford use that if you can't afford this certain camera don't be bullied don't worry about it just use it there's certain times when i've made a mistake where i've either said the wrong thing i've used the wrong piece of kit i haven't got a piece of kit with me like i didn't bring my microphone and so yeah it's a bit of a fail but it's not a fail i've learned something i learned i should have done something else or used a different alternative um but again i'm trying i'm learning i'm not an expert you're not an expert everyone's not an expert we all know and have a certain limited knowledge if you think you're an expert then i'm sorry but the world is so big and the universe is so big that there is so much stuff you do not know so yeah just be kind don't worry about what people are using what they're not using whether the camera's right whether that camera's wrong whether you're worrying about you don't need 50 megapixels or my 24 megapixel camera's okay or you know or you should be using medium format it does not matter if you're taking a picture use what you can what you can afford what you've got end of just go out and enjoy go out and do it if it makes you happy it gives you a passion go and enjoy it don't worry about the naysayers the negative people just be happy and do you and that's my advice anyway thank you for watching this has been richard for my artist insight the next artist insight series is going to be with a czech republic photographer she's a um what does she call herself she calls herself a human body admirer <laughs> and a lot of her work is self-portraits so that is going to be the next installment of artist insight so if you're uh, interested in that then take a look and yeah catch me on the next video
thanks for watching. Bye.